What's up guys? We're taking a look today at a long-awaited Motu Classics toy that I don't think anybody knew for sure we were going to get until Super 7 said, hey, it's time to pre-order Stridor. So today we're taking a look at the Heroic Warhorse as well as his evil counterpart, Night Stalker, because I've never reviewed it. And honestly, I've never actually opened it either. So we've got Stridor here in the mailer box. So this is what he comes in as far as shipping containers go. Uh, Super 7's actually shipping this guy in this box. It's not just the collectible mailer. This is actually a shipping container, so, you know, that's a thing. Some people will care. Some people won't. I personally don't care. So as far as packaging goes, we've got him here in the humongous, you know, oversized kind of beast vehicle type box. We've got him there in the window. We've got his name down here on the Grayskull bricks. And then on the back, we have got cross sell of the upcoming figures, which is really awesome to see on a box. So it's really nice to have those particular figures kind of shown front and center because we know that they're coming along with some of the stuff that has already come out. And then taking a quick look back, like I mentioned, at Night Stalker because like I said, I've never reviewed this guy and uh, now seems like the perfect time. It is also unfortunate though that now is the time to reveal that I don't own Fisto. So while I'm going to do a review on this guy, I don't have his heroic master to go along with him. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. All right, guys, here we go. Night Stalker on the left, Stridor on the right, both out of their packaging, and I am very, very excited to tear into these, take a look at them. I've had Night Stalker for quite a while now. Uh, it's been almost two years at this point, I think, right? And then I've been looking forward to getting Stridor for a very, very long time. Like I said, I don't have Fisto, so if you were hoping to see Fisto in Stridor, this is not the video for you. I'm sure Pixel Dan will take care of that when he gets to it. Uh, but we're going to take a look at both of these, and after this review, if you guys are interested in snatching a Stridor for yourself, you can still pre-order him on BigBadToyStore.com if you missed the Super 7 pre-order pre directly, so I'll put a link down below to that. But let's take a look at Stridor specifically, because these guys share molds. They're basically the same thing. We're going to take a look at the articulation as far as Strider goes, and then we'll take a look at deco and sculpt for both of these guys. Now, as far as articulation goes, if you are familiar with the Night Stalker release, then you're not going to see anything new here. Again, they share parts. They are the same mold, and there is a tremendous number of similarities between the two. However, there is a lot different here from the vintage line. The vintage Stridor and Night Stalker in comparison were basically just statues. They didn't really do anything. They did have some movable parts, but they had no quote-unquote articulation to speak of. So let's take a look at how this guy moves around because you can pose him and you can move him around a bit, but he doesn't really do a great deal because, you know, it's a horse. So we have got legs that can rotate back and forth. Uh, the, the front and back legs both do this, so that's that's the same thing there. And then we do have hinged uh, leg joints. So you can hinge them at the knee on both. And then they have hinges at the hoof. So they do have a little bit of movement down here at the bottom of the feet. You can lift them forwards and backwards. So there is some movement there, but again, you know, they're just they're just legs and they're horse legs. So you can only do so much with these, but that's fine. It's better than not being able to do anything with them at all. And in some ways, you know, if you try to position him well enough, you can get him to kind of rear back on his legs and, you know, give him something like that where he is kind of kicking back, maybe attacking another evil master or jumping on top of them, things like that. And I've obviously been playing around with that. Definitely something that I was interested in doing when I first got him out of the box. I, want, I was immediately drawn to the fact that I could get him to rear back on his legs and stand up and, you know, kind of kick an evil master in the face, which is kind of cool. He does have some vestiges of the original quote-unquote action features. They're not really action features, but they were articulated points that weren't necessarily tied to how you could move the figure. So we've got the laser cannons on the chest that move up and down. They just kind of swivel back and forth. And then we've got the articulated cannon on the tail. And then the tail itself is ball jointed so you can rotate it around and move it up and down a little bit. As far as where he really shines with articulation, it's definitely the head and the neck. So this mimics the way the vintage toy looks, but each of these segments is ball jointed. So you get a ton of motion there and each of these plates will hide that, uh, that kind of movement there. And it basically makes it look pretty fantastic. In terms of how he moves, I don't really care about the legs for the most part. 
Ideally, at the end of the day, he's just going to be standing slightly posed on a shelf somewhere, but being able to move this head really, really brings him kind of alive almost, and it makes it look like he has more of an expression going on. You can raise his head up, raise it down, and then move it side to side, but you can also move those plates around so it hides the joints and overall makes it look very much clean and crisp and I just dig the way that they decided to make that articulated neck system. So in terms of overall look and feel on these guys, we of course have to bring in Night Stalker finally because while they share 100% the same articulation scheme, they definitely don't look the same, although they are, underneath it all, they are the same. Uh, so we've got Strider here on the right, we have got Night Stalker here on the left, and these guys are pretty faithful reinterpretations of their vintage toys. Strider suffers a little bit because he is, you know, parts reuse from Night Stalker. Night Stalker, like I mentioned, came out towards the end of the Maddie Collector days, so, you know, I've had this guy in a box for almost two years now. It's been, been a while. But I'm really happy to finally crack these guys out. I guess I was saving him for the day that Stridor finally came out, and here we are. Uh, but I really do dig these toys. They are very imposing, very large pieces of plastic. So from top to bottom, you're talking about 10 inches roughly from, from, the head, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. And then from nose to tail, you're about 13 to 14 inches long. If you rear them back on their legs, you're looking at a foot and a half tall if you can get them to stand that way. They aren't necessarily the best at staying that way, but they are very imposing and they are very indicative of the size when it comes to exactly what you're dealing with with a Motu Classics vehicle slash beast. These things are not to be trifled with. They are very big, very large toys for a collector line. And I just honestly dig pretty much everything about them. Like I said, they are very much indicative of that vintage line. We've got Stridor with his helmet, and this guy is removable, and that's kind of one of the things about this particular figure that, if I remember correctly, Super 7 kind of didn't really indicate that this was coming. So this is a uh, softer plastic here. It's just flexible. It's got some nice kind of patchwork weave design on it, and it's got that horn on the top, and it just sits over top of the horns on the figure itself. Night Stalker here has got a different helmet. This is uh, this one is my favorite, honestly, in terms of design alone. It's very, very much kind of reminiscent of like a knight style helmet, and it just sits over top of his head as well. It's kind of metallic-y purple. It's got a bit of a matte design on the front of the helmet, and then it's got that singular horn at the top. But it just sits over top, and it just kind of pops on there. And I think it looks really cool. It kind of makes him slightly more menacing, just to give him a little more oomph, I think. But Night Stalker isn't the only one that has that. This was the one that Super 7 originally showed with Stridor. I think it was mostly just to kind of throw folks off about what was coming, because we saw that he, he was just 100% a Night Stalker repaint. And this is not his quote-unquote vintage helmet. Uh, this is. So they included this guy and this guy. I'm really glad that they included this. Honestly, I don't think I'm really going to use this. But like I said, I really like this design. I think it's really cool. And then as far as the overall design of the figure goes, they are very, very similar to their vintage counterparts. I mean, there's not a great deal to really fuss about here. Uh, everything on Night Stalker is very, very well painted. Very, very nice. Very clean. He does have more paint than Stridor for sure. Uh, we've got all of the gold all over the legs, and then Stridor is just a straight kind of mustardy orange-yellow color, which is perfectly fine. We do have the rotating cannons, which I talked, talked about previously on the back. We've got the rotating cannons on his chest here. We have got the rotating and pivoting tail, and like I mentioned, they are sharing, you know, pretty much the entirety of their parts here, and that does prevent present a bit of a problem for Stridor because this right here is not his design. So the initial vintage figures, as far as their chest went, these had stickers on them. So we had a kind of coat of arms almost on Stridor, and then it was more of this technological uh, robo-type panel on Night Stalker. And since this is a parts reuse, the kind of paneling on Night Stalker has come over to Stridor. So we see here that he does not have his former coat of arms type of sticker decal type thing on him. He has just a reuse from Night Soccer, and it's painted up in the orange motif that we see with Stridor. So that is kind of the fallout from the sharing of parts, which is okay. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really bother me so much. And then on the back, you have got 
uh, what was a sticker previously on the vintage figure is sculpted detail here with kind of like, you know, piping and some sort of paneling. And then we've got a sticker on the inside for the actual uh, cockpit area. And if, and if I have to talk about any one area where I see any real uh, quote unquote QC issues, like, cause I have tremendous, tremendous uh, faith in the fact that these are very nicely done and I don't have any true problems here. There is a bit of silver paint inside the cockpit. Uh, you can barely see it on camera there. That's really all I can find on these. I've heard a number of reports where people have been complaining about QC issues with Stridor, and honestly, I'm just not seeing it. It's not me being a Super 7 fanboy. Frankly, I just don't see it. I think this is a pretty solid toy. I really, really, really dig it. You know, you can put your Mode 2 Classics figures in here, have them charge into battle, and overall, I'm very, very happy with these guys. Uh, it's been nice to finally take Night Stalker out of the package. You know, there's not tons and tons to talk about here. It's mostly a thing where we finally have gotten this particular toy that a lot of people have wanted for a very long time that a lot of people weren't necessarily sure we were gonna get. Super 7, as far as I'm concerned, has delivered a quality product with extra parts. Well, one extra part that we didn't necessarily need, but honestly, I think is pretty cool with that extra helmet. And in general, this is a solid toy at a pretty decent price tag, too. It's definitely lower than I think anybody ever expected it to be. And all around, I'm very, very happy with Stridor. I really, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and say I couldn't be happier with it unless, of course, he had the correct paneling on the chest area. But I understand why he doesn't. So, yeah, I'm definitely a fan. This thing has done it for me through and through. So that's going to do it for this look at the Motu Classics Stridor figure and Night Stalker quick look from Matty Collector and Super 7. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.